In this video, we're taking a look at high performance storage solutions and which ones are best for content creators and more specifically video editors in terms of cost per performance. Now, of course, naturally, the first thing that comes to mind when looking at high volume, high performance digital storage is a network assisted storage or NAS and just your regular RAID array enclosures. But I think I've stumbled upon something that's more affordable and most importantly, that has better all round read write performance. Before we get into all that, if you're new to the channel and enjoy this type of content, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to turn on notifications for future videos. After doing some research, I found that there are mainly four types of storage solutions for video creators out there. First, we have redundant array of independent drives or RAID systems. As the name suggests, these are systems that allow you to connect multiple drives together, creating a number of advantages. In RAID 0, of which in layman's terms, is a mode that splits the drives into many different chunks and runs the drives in parallel. You get good read-write performance that is better than an individual drive. In RAID 1, which is a mirroring mode, you are able to always keep a backup of your storage at the expense of those higher speeds. These systems generally work with standard 2.5 inch HDDs or SSDs, which make the entire system very affordable since the enclosures themselves are relatively affordable unless you're going with something extremely high end with a specific set of features. This system is modular and is one of the easiest ways to set up a high volume storage solution for your needs. The downsides are that they tend to be very bulky, heavy, and noisy since there are fans inside to cool the discs. And without getting into some super high-end stuff, most systems still run on legacy platforms using SATA interfaces and 2.5 or 3.5 inch drives. And while these are affordable, they aren't the fastest drives out there. Essentially meaning that if you want blazing fast performance, you will be limited to RAID 0 and you will probably need a system that can take more than four drives to really take advantage of that parallel performance in RAID 0 mode. You'll also probably need some really good paid storage management software to help you manage and keep your RAID array running smoothly and functioning correctly. Next, we have NAS systems, which are high-end server-grade storage systems that guarantee fast speeds. Think of them as a RAID system with a storage server that runs on a network, allowing you to access your files simultaneously over the network or directly and with a bunch of other cool features. Most of these systems actually have processors and RAM and an operating system to manage the storage which is assembled in the array and are essentially just PCs designed to manage high volume storage arrays. The advantages of these systems are that they are modular allowing you to get huge storage configurations depending on what size drives you want to use. They also allow for flawless collaboration, which can be useful for production studios where multiple users need access to files at high read and write speeds. Some systems are like a private cloud storage, which allow you to upload, download, and manage your files on the fly over the internet. They usually have automated backup functions that make doing backups a breeze and they're versatile because some of the more modern NAS systems allow you to use different types of drives like 2.5 inch SSDs or regular HDDs, M.2 flash drives, and even 3.5 inch HDDs simultaneously. But there are some cons. These systems are generally bulky, noisy, and produce a lot of heat. Even though the actual storage itself, like SSDs and HDDs, has become really affordable, the NAS systems themselves with good features are very expensive. And because they are fundamentally just a computer at their core, processor speed, number of cores, and size of RAM directly correlate to how the NAS will perform, meaning that the NAS systems with the best processors and best RAM will be very expensive. Also, the system as a whole is a bigger commitment that you have to build around. For example, you have to consider where you'll keep your NAS system and whether or not you have access to Ethernet there. You also most likely need to consider including an uninterrupted power supply. As a matter of fact, you'll likely have to reconsider your entire network architecture. Do you have enough Ethernet outputs around to take advantage of the system? And if you want file access wirelessly, does your mesh system or router have the right performance to take full advantage? In short, a NAS system is a long-term solution that you'll have to build around and invest more into to get running efficiently. Next, we have your generic solid state drives that run through your USB port, something like a Samsung T5 or T6. The advantages are that these are now extremely affordable and deliver very decent read-write performance. They are small and connect to USB 3 or 3.1 and will usually connect to a USB-C port 2. 
They are plug and play and majority of them will run on that USB 3.1 architecture as mentioned before, which gives you a theoretical bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second. This is the easiest way to get super fast flash storage that you can edit 4K, 6K or even 8K or run your Lightroom or Photoshop library off of because they've got the performance for it. And they're extremely versatile because you can just buy as many of them as you want and some of the ones on the high end these days offer sizes up to 2 terabytes and speeds of up to 1050 megabytes per second or 8.4 gigabits per second coming really close to that theoretical maximum of 10 gigabits per second. The disadvantages are that 2 terabytes is simply not big enough for some workflows especially video editing workflows that deal with 4K, 6K and 8K video, so it's really not designed as a high volume storage solution. Also, the system is not modular, so what you get at the time of purchase is what you're forever limited to. If you want more, you have to buy another separate independent drive. Another thing is that the inconvenience factor is absolutely real. Trust me guys, once you start having three or four of these, it becomes extremely cumbersome to keep track of what's on what and the form factor makes them very easy to misplace. Finally, we have my recommended system of choice, which are M.2 SSD enclosures. These are SSD enclosures that allow you to use next generation form factor SSDs, which are also known as M.2 drives. They are very slim and light and have this chip or card like form factor. These SSDs are next generation and a lot of the times the enclosures will run on PCIe architecture for blazing fast speeds. As a matter of fact, these drives are designed to be mounted onto your motherboard and not necessarily in an external enclosure because of the extremely high speeds. But it turns out that with the right I.O. and interface, you can get them to work really well externally. This is the Sabrent Dual NVMe Enclosure. It allows you to put in two M.2 NVMe SSDs running through a Thunderbolt 3 interface. What does that mean, you might be wondering? It means you get up to 1500 megabytes per second or 12 gigabits per second read write speeds from a single disk. This enclosure allows you to arrange the drives in a software RAID configuration of your choosing. So in RAID 0 where the drives are working in parallel as discussed before, you're getting 2500 megabytes read or write speeds. That is 20 gigabits per second, a huge amount of storage performance from such a small form factor and trust me, I've tested these figures myself and they check out. This system is also modular which makes it extremely desirable. You can daisy chain them if you need to or just have a number of NVMe drives that you interchange. One huge advantage is that Thunderbolt 3 gives you a maximum theoretical bandwidth of 40 gigabits per second. So in theory, you could actually run two of these Sabrent enclosures in a similar configuration on one Thunderbolt 3 port and get similar performance. The enclosures are also generally well built. This Sabrent one is made from solid aluminium and is built around a completely toolless assembly, so you can get it set up without ever touching a screwdriver. This solution is also very portable, even at the higher end with something like the OWC Express 4 M2, which expands on this technology and gives you four NVMe bays instead of just two. You get up to 2800 megabytes per second or 22.4 gigabits per second read write speeds, software rate compatibility, and up to 32 terabytes of total storage. So that's eight terabytes on each slot. And because only 22.4 of that theoretical 40 gigabits per second is ever used by the SSDs, this enclosure gives you access to an additional Thunderbolt 3 port and a display port. Modularity is the name of the game as you can even daisy chain a number of these enclosures together and create a number of different RAID configurations and because this is running on that Thunderbolt 3 interface, you're always going to get great performance. This is actually the system that I will eventually upgrade to as the ultimate high performance, high volume storage solution for my workflow. Now going back to the M.2 SSD enclosures running on similar architectures, it's not all peaches and roses guys, let me explain why. M.2 is simply just a form factor and it turns out that there are different types of drives using this form factor with different interfaces and different performance. For example, this Oracle Dual M.2 SATA RAID enclosure takes M.2 drives, but those that run on the SATA interface, which perform very differently. It's running a USB 3.1 Gen 2 through a SATA interface with a theoretical bandwidth of 10 gigabits per second. And while the individual drives themselves are rated to do about 550 megabytes per second, 
or 4.4 gigabits per second, I'm only able to achieve about 3 gigabits per second, and that's in both RAID 0 and individual drive mode. I'm not sure if my unit is faulty, but I certainly cannot recommend this, especially after being promised around 6 to 8 gigabits per second in RAID 0 configuration. So the drive and interface does matter, even though they share the same M.2 form factor. Now back to the Sabrent Dual NVMe enclosure. NVMe drives are notorious for running hot, and this is no exception. My Sabrent enclosure gets so hot sometimes that it's actually uncomfortable to the touch, which is quite concerning to be honest. I mean, in all fairness, the enclosure is designed in such a way that the aluminium enclosure acts as a heatsink for the SSDs inside, but they still get extremely toasty. The enclosure also requires external power, which isn't so ideal for something so small. In addition, these systems are simply just NVMe enclosures with no hardware RAID or anything like that. Meaning that, again, you're going to have to spend a little on storage management software to manage everything and make sure things are running smoothly. So those are the reasons why I believe NVMe SSD enclosures make the absolute most sense for content creators and more specifically video editors. The cost per performance is simply just unmatched. Trust me, in order for you to find a NAS or RAID system that's going to give you 20 gigabits per second speeds, you're definitely going to be spending thousands, and while you'll likely get more storage, the performance isn't going to be there. The 4TB configuration mentioned in this video with the Sabrent Dual NVMe cost me 570 US dollars. A 8TB arrangement using that OWC 4 bay array would cost just under 930 US dollars. I'm actually working on a full review for the Sabrent Dual NVMe SSD enclosure, so make sure you're subscribed for when that comes out. Thanks for watching guys, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then make sure you do. It's absolutely free. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Catch you folks in the next one.